Too cool in there? Everything all right? <laughs> Look okay? Yeah. April. Does it look okay? Everybody got books, right? Please be seated. We're about to take off. <laughs> Good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening my brother. Good evening, my brother. It's a pleasure to be here before y'all today. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Facebook. Yes, Lord. May I welcome our family worship. As always, everybody is welcome. Just come on out and join us through for these studies through our morning and afternoon services. Amen. Today we're going to continue to go through the book of um, Galatians. I still got just a wee, wee, wee bit of all. Um, Foundation of things I just want to lay down. Um, it's going to be long, but then we're going to get into the, the book, The Liberated Life. Um, I just want to put something up on this board. Here. <coughs> the book of Galatians is, is this right here. In a nutshell, it's this. Let me get this on here. Human achievement, a divine accomplishment. That's right. Man, in itself, as I spoke, said a few weeks ago, have a default. But we feel as though that we have to be doing something. 
we have to be doing something. Um, whether not it's in this natural world to try to correct certain things in our lives. And, that, and now even in the spirit, in, in the spiritual world, where we feel as though we could do something to achieve the favor of God. And as we know, there's nothing we can do that can achieve. Human achievement will, if you depend solely on human achievement for your salvation, you will die. You Amen. will die That's in right. your sins, plain and simple. But if you rest, praise God, in a divine accomplishment that Jesus Christ accomplished on that cross of Calvary for the remission of your sins, my sins, the sin of the world, and whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's what you will have. God is not a man that he should lie. If he promised it, it will be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It will be. So we can trust in that and stop it. And, and, and there's so many people, they, like I said, trust in themselves. Trust in themselves. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is wicked above all that. I don't trust my own heart. Amen. I don't trust my own That's heart. Right. Unless it is converted, changed, regenerated by what Jesus accomplished for me on the cross, I'm not trusting my heart. My, trust, my heart will lead, my heart will try to lead me astray. So I try to get my try to get my heart, my mind is 18 inches from here to the heart. Try to get them on the same wavelength. The Bible tells us to um, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The heart is already changed. If you are, uh, if you are truly saved, your heart belongs to God. Your mind, on the other hand, still is is unredeemed. It's unredeemed. It's going to continue to think this human achievement or what I can do to um to to be saved. Under human achievement, we have in the law, we have do, <coughs> we have don't. I think I wrote that right. <laughs> uh, we have, as I said, we have that default function. Human achievement brings about death. You might read Romans 8, 2 for me, please. And can somebody please read 2 Corinthians 3, 6 through 7. And the book of Galatians that the law kills. Yep. There's nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing <clears throat> that we can do. And I might repeat that so much during these during these little sessions that to to as Jesus said, come to me all you weary and heavy laden. We lay down with a bunch of laws that sometimes they go unnoticed to us. We don't we we look and we we're so accustomed to it. By that default, that we don't even recognize when we do it. I find myself doing it sometimes when I feel as so though there's certain times if I'm not, if I'm watching TV and not reading my Bible, I feel as so though that I'm doing something wrong. Uh huh. Yeah. I feel as so though that I'm doing something wrong. That's and right. I feel convicted when I do so. Um, but that's, that's just, that's just um, <laughs> religion. I mean, really, if you begin to set a bunch of rules, regulations, and rituals for yourself, oh, this time right here in the morning, I want to wake up and pray. This time in the evening, I want to be praying. Yeah. This time at night, I want to be praying. The Bible tells us that we should be in prayer continuously, Amen. all during the day. So why would we want to set times, set times when we, we want to set times when we want to go before God where our desire should be to be in the presence of God because the way has been opened. 
when the veil was torn that we could be in his presence at all times. There's no need to set time. That's religion. Yeah. That's Amen. religion. That's right. And there's a lot of people that do that. But let me go on here. Over here. Divine commas. A commas message. Regeneration. By what Christ did, his accomplishment on the cross, our hearts are regenerated. Yeah. Our hearts are regenerated. If you read through the book of, um, read in the book of Ezekiel 36, chapter 21 through like 36, that will give you a prime example of what regeneration. This is nothing we can do. All the personal pronouns in those verses is God said, I will do this. I will do this. I will put a new heart in you. I will put my laws in your heart that you will follow and walk in my laws and my decree. It's all, every, all this mm. <clears throat> Christianity once we get into our minds, and I'm going to repeat this a lot, there's nothing we That's can right. do to warrant our interest into the kingdom of God but one thing trust in the divine accomplishment Amen. of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm just laying this down just a little bit, then I'm going to go on to into the book. Um, trust in his finished work. Oh, yeah. I like your hat. <laughs> and the law. And trust in what he did. That's all it is. Amen. And believe. Romans 10 and 9 tells us. Amen. I'm going to this book now. I might say some things that <coughs> some people on Facebook might not like. Um, maybe some in here might not agree with. I wouldn't say they won't like it, they just won't agree with um some of the some of the things that um that I may say tonight. Um, but let's just talk just a little about the people of Galatia. You know, they were, when Julius Caesar went in to, and conquered them, even he himself said that they were a fickle people, that their minds could be easily changed and manipulated into believing whatever the conquerors would have, would do to them. And then we can see the same thing happen with Paul in the city of life. One minute they were praising Paul and Barnabas, calling Paul um like Zeus and 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 um and Barnabas um Hermes and then the next year they know what they was doing. They stoned Paul to death. They worshiped the man one minute, the next minute right. they were stoning him to death. They were fearful people and nothing had changed. Their heart may have been changed, but their mind had not been changed yet. The word like that's always the Bible said to be transformed by the renewing of these people, their hearts were changed, but their minds were not transformed. They did not have this, this mind in you that is in Christ Jesus, as Amen. Scripture tells us. They didn't have this. What, what they had was that same mindset that they was accustomed to all their lives. Um, but what mainly the, the book of Galatians is this. It's a book of apostasy. Apostasy is this. Abandoning the truth. Set or taught. They 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 were they had a pot they went in apostasy for because infiltrators came in. You remember Paul told the Ephesians church before he left the church at Ephesus. He told them, he said that he feared for them because he knew that after his departure that grievous wolves were going to come in and devour the flock. Now Paul saw this in the future. He said, Paul walked solely in the Spirit of God and God conversed with him. He knew, he knew, and if and if and if he wasn't spoken to directly, people were coming to tell Agabus told Paul, say, when you go into Jerusalem, the man who owned this belt, you know, going to be bound up and, and brought before rulers. I mean, God did <coughs> before he knew he was going in Rome. The angel appeared to him. God was constantly with him throughout his his <coughs> ministry. That's why when Paul was stoned in Lystra, Paul got right back up. Walk like Paul was a bad man. He had, he lay there. They thought he was dead. Got back up. Walked back into the city. 
walk back. You know why he walked back in the city? Because he knew he was operating under the will of God. And he was walking under the will of God. Well, as I said, it may be some things that some people and they might they they they, they won't agree with me because um I'm just pretty sure they won't. It's okay, bro. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna I'm I'm speak on it. Come on, I'm gonna speak on it. As mom, as and I was going through, I was going through and like the first verses in um Galatians, and it said Paul an apostle. Let's talk about that. An apostle. What is an apostle? The one that sent is a sent one, an ambassador. Of, of he's an ambassador. But when I was going in, I got on Google and I began Googling. I saw this and it, and, and it shocked me. Right? It shocked me. It says, "Become legally ordained with the title of apostle." How to become legally ordained, licensed, and commissioned with the title of apostle by the World Christianship Ministries Ordination Program. Do marriage, do marriage and wedding ceremonies and other Christian services with ordination as an apostle. In order to become an ordained, licensed apostle, you just need to complete our simple application and mail fact, call the application in or just or to us or send the application to us as a PDF or JPEG file attached to our email address. You may open and print our application ordering form by clicking the blue apply now button. And I got the blue apply now button. Is it that easy? No. Is it that easy? Is that that's why today there are so many people who walk around with titles with titles, saying that I am an apostle by paper, but are you an apostle by the decrees that's listed and the qualification that's laid out in the Bible? The Bible tells us that the, the, the church was built on the foundation of the apostles. It was built on the foundation of the apostles. They was, you know, people say, okay, yeah, yeah, I bind, I bind, the bind and loose, I bind you up, Satan. I tell you what, if they bind it up, Satan, please don't let him go because he aggravates me. Keep yeah. him chained up. If you bind him up, loose. see, but they're not understanding that. Would it be the bind and loose that was amongst the apostles? Everything they they bound here on earth within the building and up in the building up of the church in that time was loosed in heaven. It was it was it was certified in heaven. When Matthias, he was chosen, and that's that's a, that's a subject for another day. I believe personally that that they took into their hands something that God had desired to do to choose Paul to be that apostle. Because after you hear that mention of, of Matthias early in the book of Acts, you hear about him no more. You can read the books of his in his, his historical books of his how he died, but other than that, he. There's no, there's nothing written of him doing anything through the book of Acts. There's nothing. Um, then, qualifications. Qualifications of an apostle. I'm going to go to Acts 1, 21, 30, 22. This is just the first off the book of Galatians. We say Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Um... Acts 1, 21 to wherefore these wherefore of these men which have accompanied us all the times that Jesus went Lord, the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until that day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of this of his resurrection. Me personally, I, I, now I've yet to see a man that's over 2,000 years old. I've yet to see a man that's living today, that walked with Christ, that witnessed his death, burial, and witnessed his resur the resurrected Christ. 
I just haven't. I just haven't. So it's hard for me, and it's just my it's just my opinion, you know. It, you know it's Amen. Not about it. But Amen. Um, I've never seen a two thousand year old man. I didn't know I have witnessed this. Um, I don't and and the apostolic succession that's not biblical. Where they say that um. Um, you're laying on hands of passing down, passing down, passing down, passing down authority. You can't pass down something that Jesus Christ gave to you. You can't pass it down. Remember um, Elijah and Elisha. And before Elijah was taken up, he asked, can he have a double portion of his power? He told him he asked the hard thing. It wasn't his to give. So who, this apostolic succession, have the authority to pass down something that was given to them like Elijah from God given to them through given to them to pass on to another person it's it's just not um it's not biblical not biblical it's not biblical at all it's not biblical at all let me see let me go here all oh, my papers falling out it's too well <laughs> Paul and apostles, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, not of men, neither by men. There was so much that was going on in those days where people was questioning Paul's apostolic credentials. Um, like who had ordained him? Who had given him the authority of an apostle? But when he says, not of men, when Jesus was on the cross and he died, when he was about to die, he looked down at the apostle John, the disciple he loved. He said, behold, uh, man, thy mother, behold, woman thy son at this point right here all humanity of jesus had been with before after he died had been gone so the person the, the the jesus that paul saw on the damascus road was the resurrected jesus christ who gave him and people say okay well you had to be with jesus christ for to walk with him for three years and and talk with him for three years and watched all he did paul was three years in the, in the deserts of Arabia being taught one-on-one -on -one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's disqualifies him because the first thing people were asking, what, what qualifies Paul to be one? They knew what the qualification was. The qualification was he had to walk with him, talk with him from the baptism of John as with the, um, with, with Matthias had to be with him through the baptism and then see the resurrected Christ. And some say, well, he didn't say, well, who appointed him? Who appointed him? <clears throat> was it a laying on of hands? If you go in the book of Acts, um, where they laid hands, was it by man? Why would Paul say not by man? Because it was a laying on of hand of him and Barnabas to go into the Gentile? No. His, his apostleship was ordained and certified by the risen Jesus Christ. That was a vessel. A chosen vessel. And we, sometimes we ask, okay, well, of all people, why Paul? First and foremost, Paul said he was a Pharisee of Pharisee. Yeah. He was a Pharisee of Pharisee. If you go back to the 23rd chapter of the book of Matthew, Jesus had nothing but woes and judgment against the Pharisees. So why you won't pick a guy who did, you just sit here and you told him, said, why do you persecute, persecute thou me? Paul was raised up. Paul was predestined. Paul was chosen from his mother's womb, as he said, just like um, with Jeremiah. He was chosen from his mother's womb, Paul says so itself, to, to have Christ revealed in him, as scripture said. So he was raised up. He was put in situations with being raised up with like Gamaliel, a really high-ranking Pharisee in that day and time. He was put around the best people to learn the best, and God, I believe, allowed these things to happen 
in his life in order he could be that perfect Amen. vessel. That's Just right. like, you know, what scripture says, a God of comfort who comforts us through our afflictions so we could be a comfort to others. Paul went through so much that way when he went that way. He was dealing with these people. He could come down to their level. As it said in scripture, said, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To the Gentile, he, he became, he said, I became all things to all men in order to win them to Christ. Yes. He become all things to all men to win them to Christ. So God had a divine plan for Paul's life that bring him up for the sole purpose, for the salvation of Gentiles were prophesied throughout the Old Testament. There's a lot of places in the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah, where it speaks about that the Gentiles would be saved. But the, but the thing was this, the, the Jews wasn't being that light unto the Gentile world. They were not. They were not. They was constantly in um, captivity and so forth and so on. Um, but um, somebody read um, Acts 10, 38, 42 for me, please. doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and we are witnesses to all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hang on a tree him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and testify that it is he which had, was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. Amen. Yeah. There's no qualifications again. They speaking of it themselves. Where they had to, you know, they had to see him. They ate with him. They drank with him after his resurrection. Therefore, he, their, their authority was given by Christ. So I don't, me personally, I don't see where a man can, you know, you know you could, they, could, they could ratify something, but you cannot do it unless the person is called out. I'm going to go somewhere I shouldn't, but. Um, well, as I said, the um, apostles were just, the apostles were raised up taught to be the authority in the establishing of the early church. They were given authority. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to read here second, I mean Ephesians 2 starting at verse 12. They said, and at that time we were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made not by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinance, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were now not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, brought unto an holy temple of the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Yeah, Lord. Thank right here, it's, it's saying the, 
The church is built on the foundation of the, the apostles and the prophets. The apostles and the, and, the, and the prophets. The ones from the beginning of the twelve and Paul and the prophets of old. It, 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 the church is built upon that. There's no more new revelation coming. Because all the revelations came through the apostles <clears throat> and not through just anybody. And there's no new revelation. There's no more adding to. The Bible tells us that he want to add to or take away from. Amen. They're going to suffer. They're going to incur the curses here. So if anybody want to add to this or take away from something that's already established, it's already established. I know we have different <laughs> versions of Bible and, and all, which is, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a problem. It's just when people began to speak of these new revelations that God has given them on how people should live, live and what's coming and how this should be and how that should be, how the church should be. And that's what I believe a lot has crept into the modern church today. There's a lot of rules, let's say regulations or rituals. Um, me with this hat on right now, and I probably couldn't walk in certain churches right now. I couldn't walk in. I like your hat. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work. It must be something said, you know. I've been places where you get to the, like right beyond the door right there. If you walk back there, somebody's there to tell you to take off your hat. I know for a fact that when the um when the ancient priests went before God, they had the turban on their head. But people go to where Paul speaks about um, a man covering his um, head. Um, but I I just don't see where that has anything. I mean, it's out of respect. They say we we are the temple. We are the temple. Yeah. That's right. We are the temple. Let's say Paul, not a man. Paul was not but by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Humanity was gone. So Paul saw what the risen Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul, full of fire, headed there to persecute and and do all sorts of atrocious things to the Christians and the church to destroy the church. Paul said he went all out, all out. He maxed out to that red spot you see on your. On your on your on your tack up there, and it gets you that red. Paul took it to that point, and when people began to say, "It is it, when Paul changed," but now I'll be jumping ahead. I'm not gonna go there. Is that you know, it's like when Paul came, was converted, and he began what he began um, preaching, being taught and preaching. No one in the, other, in the um, church of Jerusalem knew him, and they just figured he was like some double agent trying to infiltrate to come in there to begin to do what he used to do. Um, it said, to all the brethren which are with me unto the churches in Galatia. The churches in Galatia, Galatia was just, it was, it was a province. It was a province um, which consisted of, and people have a lot of um Arguing going back and forth was the, the, the northern Galatian theory or the southern Galatian theory, but I, 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 I lean more towards the southern because that's where these um these provinces was, was Lystra, Antioch, <coughs> and Lystra, Antioch, Iconium, and Derby was the churches that um in there. They was in the southern part of um Galatia, which is today modern day Turkey. Um, but he said, to all the brethren which are with me unto the churches in Galatia. When Paul says that the brothers who are with me, he's not speaking like, okay, yeah, yeah, they're with me. They're with me in body, but they're also with me in doctrine. They agree with me solely with what, what, what is being spoken here, what, what, he's, what he's speaking and writing here. They are in totally agree. Yeah, they're with me. Like you say, you be with somebody and y'all... Um, going through something with somebody and you say, yeah, I'm with you, brother. I believe everything that you say. I'm with you. And that's what this, this is what this is implying, that they say, yeah, they with him body, but they also with him in, in spirit. When they say that the brothers who are here with me to the church in, in Galatia, 
Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God, to deliver us from this, this present evil world. To deliver us from this present, this world is evil. Yeah, we know. And there's a lot. We make up, I believe, um, Christianity, Christians make up like almost like a, I wouldn't say a minority, but we don't make up a real large percentage of the population of the world. And more of the world is leaning to, more toward those things which are contrary to the Holy Bible. Um, and we have to live amongst it. I mentioned um, a few weeks ago that um, the Bible tells us that the devil has been cast down and that he's full of wrath. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, he given over the authority that God had given to him and now is given over to the devil. Who has authority? The Bible tells us that he's the God of this age. He's the prince of the air. He has rule over there, but he won't have rule when it comes down, when Jesus comes down and take it back from him. But he had, he do has power, he has authority. We never undermine him. And we do live, we live in a um evil, evil world, evil society. Um, but we still are encouraged to be the light in the world. Never to blend in with the world, but to bring light on the evil of the world. Um, I didn't even go to this book, did I? Sorry. <laughs> no okay. Huh? It said, at the beginning of this letter, Paul informs the Galatian he is divinely appointed as by apostles. He writes, Paul an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Amen. Paul was, convert, was a converted Pharisee or legalist. Before becoming a Christian, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. As a young Pharisee, Saul had no use for Jesus of Nazareth and persecuted the early church as he explains in more details in the next section. While on his way to Damascus to arrest more Christians, Saul encounters Jesus Christ, Acts 9, 3 through 19. As a result, he becomes a believer and later an apostle, apostle, which means one sent forth with a message. Yeah. Therefore, Paul declares himself an apostle through Jesus Christ and God the Father. He was not one of the original twelve, but was later, but was called later to be an apostle. Next, Paul writes, "All the brothers who are with me to the churches in Galatia. All the brothers refer to Barnabas, who helped Paul establish the Galatian churches on their first missionary journey, and the other Christians at Antioch. Antioch, from there, from where Paul is writing this letter." Real liberation requires accepting the authors of the Bible as the Thessalonians <laughs> did. How did they receive Paul's word according to 1 Thessalonians 2, 13? We're, we're on page 8 in our, uh, in our workbooks, is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Lost me there, man. Huh? Amen. Received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God. Amen. And that's how we should receive these words. There's no. I, I've heard from people, uh, guys that told me before, and they said, well I, well, I don't believe the Bible man wrote that. You know, you know. And, God will speak, he speaks to me, and I know, you know, it ain't like they know God, they right. don't believe in his word. But how can you uh, know God but not believe his word when it plainly it's speaks of his inspired word of God? That's right. You know, I, mean, I think that's kind of like an 
He said, I will put my people, he said, I will put my words in your heart and you will be compelled Amen. to walk in them. So if God is truly operating in your life, in your life or your lives, then guess what? There's no perfection. Don't get me wrong. There's no perfect, no perfection. But when you do step out of line, there will be conviction. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And when you and when you begin to when the, when you begin to feel conviction, you should be as James say, consider it pure joy because you know that God is God is working with you. Amen. <laughs> that God is working with you. Conviction, conviction is is almost is it, is like we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. We're sealed for for the day of redemption when Christ come. I paid for this and I'm taking it with me now. Yeah. I paid for these people and I'm taking it with me now. I paid for these people. I'm taking it with me now. That's what that's what is the redemption is. But when we walk about and walk in this world, we have to, we have to, we have to, there's no way in the scale, we have to walk in ways that glorifies God. I'm just going to stop out of the book right now until Wednesday. Um, we have to walk in ways that bring glory to God in our words, in our deeds, in our action, in our giving. And our receiving and, and everything we have to always have our cap king be kingdom minded, always thinking will 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 this please God. I know the Bible says all, all things are uh let me quote it from a from the NIV, right? It said all things are permissible for me or meaning allowable to me, but not all things are beneficial. The main thing is that all things are allowable to us. But do all things we do glorify God? Amen. That's what it boils down <coughs> to. Um, that's, I mean, really, I think in the last chapter and the last verse of um, Ecclesiastes, it, told it, it tells us what the, the, whole, the whole thing of man is to glorify God and keep his command. And that's, that's, that's our purpose. Um, and as I said, there's no perfection in me. Um, the Bible doesn't teach y'all um, sin is perfection. It's, it let us know that we, we it's, it's literally impossible because if we could, then there would have been no need for Jesus Christ. We could have been Pharisees and legalists and we could work our way. We could keep 613 laws and then as the days go on, add and add and pat and pat and pat and on to that even more. But God looked down and saw our frailty. God saw down and looked down and see the weakness in this flesh. God looked down and saw these un, 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 unredeemed minds of ours and says they, they can't do it. If you think back through, you think back through the Old Testament where God destroyed um, the flood. Because the flood, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And then you have to think about that 400 year, the intertestamental period between 
the Old Testament and New Testament, 400 years. God was still living. The Bible, that song said God's not there. He was still living, but he just sat back. He sat back. There was no prophets given true words from God at that time. In them 400 years, it was a whole lot of false prophecies going on. But God looked down, and that's where you see the mercy of God in action. He could have destroyed the world then. But instead, he began to put his plan of salvation to work. And again, when John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yeah. When John the Baptist said that, God began that good work for, not for all men, then it'll go in all men, and he's going to bring it to completion. Amen. He's going to bring it, I don't, I'll say it over and over, he's not a man, he should lie. He said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Amen. Some people may not like this, and I guess I don't believe in people that, I don't believe in backsliders. Amen. I don't believe in backsliders because God, if he starts something, he won't finish it. It's yeah. just like the parable Jesus gave with, um, with, um, Jesus gave the parable of the builder well, who, who intended to build a tower and not sit down and count the cost to finish that. Because if he's unable to finish, people will come by and mock and say that he wasn't able to finish that. You think God want to be spoken on by that? So if God began something in you. People will see that little, that little parable there as a natural thing, but I see it as a, as a, a spiritual thing where God will not be mocked. He say he will not be mocked. And they, he talk about a person being mocked. So God's going to start something in a person's life. He's going to definitely bring it to fruition. He's going to bring it. He's going to seal that person. He's going to preserve that person. He's going to keep that person until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once saved, always changed. That's right. Once saved, as Brother David said, always change. Amen. Anybody got any questions? I know, like, once you're saved, your <coughs> spirit's going to operate in your heart. And you know, it's going to deter you from sin. It's going to, you know, your, you know, your mindset's still there, but the spirit is going to stray you away from that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's, it, the spirit will, as I said a little bit earlier, the spirit will convict. That's 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 what um that that's what the spirit does. You know, yeah. it keeps us in line. Jesus said, "I I'll send you a what? A helper, comforter, a comforter, a helper to you know to get get us through." We will send another comforter. We will send another comforter. What is it? Um, um uh, aloes, the one of the same kind. Um, to help us in a, in the Holy Spirit is a helper. He's a he got us in all truth. He's our counselor. He is he is he he is our he's a seal that seals us until the day. Yeah. If you can I, sin and you're not convicted of it, you better get you better check where you're getting your source from. Really exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that we won't sin, but if uh, when we sin. You feel that twisting around there and say, man, I mean, yeah. I feel ashamed and you feel as, you feel ashamed to even go to God. To um to repent of it, you know? You're still walking in the ways of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna add something to you touched on as far as apostles and you, you did and when I said Amen, I meant it, you got it right. There's people out there if anybody represents themselves as an apostle, burn the channel. Start checking. Yeah. Don't, don't don't listen to a word they say. Right. Once once God had this and He gave us His immutable word. Yes, that's right. Through the apostles. Now prophets. That's a different thing. A prophet can actually be associated as a teacher, but as far as uh, someone getting a message from God to give the world, no, no, no. So if you if Bill Johnson comes to mind, Bethel Church, Redding, yep. California. Um, but there's a bunch of them out there that do it. But if anybody says they're an apostle, steer clear of it. Yeah. See, they they they'll come with these um they'll come with <coughs> signs and they say they're coming with signs and wonders. That's why we 
we live by faith and not by sight. That's what a lot of people will, a lot of people probably will be deceived yeah. because they're going to be going by what their eyes see instead of going on faith and believing what we are already forewarned of saying the last perilous times. Perilous times, the Bible speaks about perilous times. Yes, it does. And, 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 and right now, it's not really perilous. It's just a bunch of madness going on in the world now. <laughs> perilous it times. It won't take much to get worse. Yeah, but it won't <coughs> take much to get worse. But perilous times are here. They, 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 these are the birth, the birth pain of, of those days that were to come, you know, so... See, yeah, Pastor Dennis back there at the door. I think it's time for me to. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any more questions? Come on, y'all. Let's open it up. Let's open it up. Let's speak on it. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the DJ? word. DJ? We, we, uh, you, you ain't got nothing over there, DJ? We kind of hinted that uh, the Christianity might be close to being the minority. Uh, it's the, actually the largest religion of the world. And then uh, Islam. Islam is next. The Muslims. Uh, Hinduism. Sure. I don't know what the third was. Uh, uh, Judaism. Judaism. Are you I just wanted to clear that up in case anybody on. Are you including Roman Catholicism? In that well, I didn't look at uh, see uh, how it had it broken up, down, but Roman you're right. That's what pushes it above. Yeah, I sure. think what he's saying is the Christian population compared to the world population. Amen. Uh -oh. That's what you were saying. Well. I think something that you pointed out right there that kind of uh, really I, I've never hit on as far as we started the book of Galatians is the point to where Paul was the one you were speaking of and uh, you're saying you know, which they all agreed with that doctrine you know and we just thought it was, you know, I, I love that it's, I never really thought about that much but when he said you know, to the brothers you know to Galatia you know he was yeah. speaking to the ones that believed because there was so many you know, he was he was charging them. You know what I'm saying? To hey, let's step up because there's there, there's some wrong teachings going on here. You know, and, and I, I really I, I think that that kind of to a person to me that opened my eyes a little bit right there. I thought it was really yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Something so simple as a few little words, you know, that, that you don't really ever see a click. Oh, uh, everybody in here might not understand the bias of the Apostle Paul. Oh. Uh, Matthias was chosen, but he wasn't chosen by Jesus Christ. Right. He was chosen by uh, uh, Acts 126 says they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias. Mm -hmm. He was not chosen by Jesus Christ to be an apostle. That's right. If, or, or a disciple. If we'll look, when Jesus started uh, choosing the disciples, Jesus chose all of them. That's right. Even the one that betrayed him. That's right. So, uh, and they, in order to be, become an apostle, they had to spend time with Jesus. Yes, sir. Okay. Jesus Christ chose Paul. So Paul actually replaced the Jews as the 12th disciple. Yes, sir. I, I, I agree. And so, you know, uh, and as you said, Paul, Paul spent three years in, in Arabia. That's right. With you know, with Jesus, learning, right. mm -hmm. you know, learning from him. That's right. And Matthias didn't, you know, didn't spend any of his time because he was chosen by name. And you no, know, we can choose whoever we want, but if God never has not chosen, then you no, know, it's no important. Yeah, you know, it actually, in the Bible does it don't really mention, so you know, we can infer. Or conclude um, that Matthias did because he's never mentioned anywhere. That's the only time he's mentioned. Um, but they chose him. Apparently, he had he had been with them because it said it you know gave what the um, stipulation or qualifications was. And if they if they proceeded to choose them in spite of that, then they was wrong from that point. So I'm I'm leaning well, more towards that many, he did see it all. But he just was never mentioned anywhere. How many apostles actually? Um, how many disciples we have writings in the Bible? How many how many apostles do we actually have writings from in the Bible? How many apostles? Not just Matthias. That's open to the press. That's not that's not trying to pin you guys. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm not trying to pin you. No, no, you good. You good. 
I really don't know the answer, about but it. I think it's only about four. 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 Yeah, I would say it's, <laughs> it's, it's Paul, Peter, James, Peter James, Jude, 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 Jude John, no, they were apostles. They were disciples. Yeah, they were disciples. They I don't were, think um, I don't think James. Yeah. I don't think James was. Yeah, the writer of the book of James, James that was Jesus' was brother. And see, he didn't. Him, him, and the other brothers didn't even. They wasn't converted until after Jesus' resurrection. James, they were, they, they right. didn't even yeah, believe James that he was. Right. So, I really, we don't have that many of the apostles that we actually have writings from. So, Matthias isn't in that group by himself. Is what I'm trying to say. If, if you look at some of those old, those um books. Like the, like the Gospel of Judas, what's those? They call them the Lost Books of the Bible. Yeah, Thomas, the Book of Thomas. Yeah, the Book of Thomas, and you will find one. You might find one, but I wouldn't recommend reading it because I remember this, when I long time ago when I was younger, maybe about twenty years old, and I went to church and um, I called myself being saved, and um, I started reading one of those books called the Lost Books of the Bible, and I told my pastor and I asked him about it. He said, "Put it down." throw it away. Um, I wouldn't recommend them um, it's just, it's to be like reading you know, any of those 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 false yeah, gospel books. Paul, Paul Paul wrote how much of the um, <coughs> New Testament? He wrote the biggest majority of the 13, New Testament. 13 of the 27. Mm -hmm. He wrote 13 of the 27. Well, I, I, I'm, all, I'm confused right here. Now, um, what was the <laughs> qualifications to be an apostle? Going back in, in. They were the ones that Jesus called. They walked with Jesus. Now, like Matthew, Mark, um, Luke, and John. I, is John one of the apostles? They, they, they walked with Jesus. The but they, they came after. They weren't in the 12 uh, apostles. They were disciples that came, and they got some of their information from the apostles, and it was a passed down thing because the, um, they weren't written until after. Well, John wrote... Um, Revelations, I think, like, well, there's a discrepancy on when it actually was, but like 66 AD. Um, I think that was the last one that was written. Um, but that was handed down from face to face knowledge from the witnesses. And actually, you had the scripture up there about the witnesses, what, um, about the witnesses that God had appointed. Um, and there's like 500 actual mentioned people in the Bible that witness Christ's crucifixion or it's close to that number yeah and we have that um, so the apostles walked with Christ during his ministry during his three years and actually I, I was reading it actually all the things that happened in Jesus's ministry actually only account for 52 days so everything that we get from Christ's ministry they've gone through and chronologically you know, look at it, and yeah, it all happened yeah. within 52 days. Wow. So that's an amazing thing, if you think of it. If it's accurate, that's something that a Bible study group has done. Yeah. But <laughs> not a lot of our um, Bible is written by apostles. It's written by witnesses and disciples and people that like were there. Like and Luke. Yeah, and passed down. Luke, Luke, was a, Luke is a Gentile. He just, right. He just wrote what, what he was on the mark. Mark, Mark, um, just wrote down an account that he, um, I mean, that he got. Um, but all of it is God. mutable word of God passed down through the witnesses. And like I said, we actually had the verse up there that records, you know, these were God's witnesses too. Yeah. That's what was Acts. Yeah, that's um, it's um, Acts. It's in <coughs> Acts one. It said, "Wherefore of these?" And it go up one. For it is written in the book of Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. They prayed though. They did pray that God showed them when he said which which of these, but the thing is they didn't tarry. They didn't right. wait. They didn't wait. I guess they got a little bit impatient like Abraham got impatient about the promises that God gave him about his son. And therefore they went ahead 
and and, and, and cast lot. They gambled it and land on him, land on Matthias. And as I said, if he was if he was God's chosen, we would have read a little more about him in, in the scriptures. But instead, the one who God, I believe, had chosen from his birth, from his mother's womb, was Paul. Well, you know something that actually has been very encouraging to me I want to share real quick? Is if you really look at Peter, Peter was bad news. It wasn't until later, after Christ had already been crucified, and man, you all know the story of him denying Christ three times the night of the trial and the crucifixion. And there's more. I mean, well, Paul had to chastise Peter because he was bringing circumcision back into the Gentiles, trying to get the Gentiles to be circumcised, so in bringing the law, which is what Galatians is covering. Um, but Peter was a mess. Yeah. Peter was a mess. So the apostles, the ones that were actually broke bread and ate with Jesus and walked with him during his ministries, their faith was not what it should be. It grew. It grew. And then once their mind got involved and they started thinking, they engaged what Dennis was preaching on this morning, heart, mind, soul, and strength. And once you put all of that together and you really start seeking that's when, that's when you start really being fruitful in your walk with Christ. Yeah, but but Peter, Peter was a mess. Yeah, Peter was. was a mess. If you go through and you really study Peter, <laughs> he was something else. I he, I call Peter Mackie. He always has foot in his mouth.